we've been doing quite a few experiments with acids and you, the viewers, made real popular requests that we should try using piranha solution. Neil and I never used piranha solution, didn't even know what it was, but we've made it and the results have been fantastic. All sorts of exciting things, including a magnificent experiment with Neil's banana. Piranha solution is a mixture, not a very precise mixture, of hydrogen peroxide solution and concentrated sulfuric acid. It's really important not to have an excess of hydrogen peroxide at any time or the solution can be potentially explosive. So you have a volume of sulfuric acid and you add about a quarter of that volume of hydrogen peroxide solution. These experiments are potentially very dangerous and you must definitely not try them yourselves. You should watch our video instead. When you mix the solutions, they get very hot and you start seeing bubbling, almost certainly due to some of the hydrogen peroxide decomposing to oxygen and water. We began quite modestly. Neil tried a flower which disappeared pretty quickly. He then tried a berry from a rowan tree. Amusingly, neither Brady nor Neil knew what sort of tree it was. And surprisingly, this berry obviously was being attacked, but nothing very exciting happened. But then they tried a couple of skittles, small sweets, and they were amazing. The reactions have what is called an induction period. That means nothing seems to happen and then whoosh, everything takes off. So if you see these two sweets swimming around in the solution, and then suddenly the reaction starts and the reaction generates heat so it goes faster and it goes faster and faster. And the first stage appears to be the concentrated sulfuric acid removing the elements of water, H2O, from the sugar in the sweet and generating very finely divided carbon, which is black. So the solution goes a sort of blackish brown color. Now what's really interesting about the piranha solution is that it can oxidize the carbon to CO2. So this black solution gradually goes lighter and lighter, pale yellow, and eventually colorless. So you have something that is really surprising for chemists, where you have solids that just disappear when you put them into solution. Like they've been eaten by piranhas. Yes, except with piranhas, you see fat fish. Of course, chemists always like to scale up their reactions. So Neil took a whole handful of Skittles. Lots of different colours. And the first part of the reaction went rather more violently. You can see with the thermal image, it generates a lot of heat and there are hot gases flowing out of the top of the beaker.
the reaction stopped at the carbon stage because the hydrogen peroxide, I think, just ran out because there wasn't a very large volume of solution. Neil then got out a Mars bar. All right, let's get some Mars bar in there. And his fantastic knife in which he chopped off a piece of Mars bar, quite a large piece. It went into rather a gooey mess because I think there was just too much sugar and chocolate to be completely destroyed by the volume of piranha solution that he made. You'll notice that Neil's been quite careful and not making a very large volume at any one time because of the danger of the solution. And at the end of each experiment, he pours all the solution into sodium carbonate, which neutralizes the sulfuric acid and just liberates CO2. So it becomes slightly alkaline, which will make the hydrogen peroxide or any residual hydrogen peroxide much less oxidizing. Brady produced a banana and Neil chopped off a quite a modest piece. And Neil put it in a fresh piranha solution and it reacted really quite well. I think because banana is soft and has quite a lot of sugar in it. And so it reacted and again, we got a lot of carbon. And like the Skittles, it more or less disappeared. Did the job on it, didn't it? We got a bit more ambitious, and Neil was persuaded to put the entire banana, skin and all, into the solution. There was mayhem, frothing everywhere. I think that the fine particles of carbon cause more frothing they stabilise bubbles, so it all bubbles up much more. And solution went all over the inside of Neil's fume cupboard. I was amazed. I've never seen such destruction from a relatively small amount of solution. So it was really quite a big clean-up job before we could try the experiment we really wanted to do, which was to try yet another chicken leg. Well, if you like watching science experiments, why not do some of your own with our episode sponsor, Mel Science. I'm delving into the world of Mel Chemistry. This free starter kit contains all the essentials, and then with a subscription, you get these monthly boxes filled with experimental goodness. Today I'm going for the tin kit, in particular creating the tin hedgehog. It's well explained, educational, definitely appealing to my inner child, my wannabe scientist. Here's some professional footage. But I was also pretty happy with my own. A bit later, my hedgehog floated to the top of the test tube. It got me thinking about what was going on. Was it the bubbles? More experiments may be required. This strikes me as a great family activity, not just for aspiring chemists, but anyone who's just a bit curious. It's also exciting knowing a new box of goodies is coming every month. More experiments, mysteries, knowledge, fun to be had. And here's a bonus. Get a 50% discount on your first box by following the instructions in our video description and using our discount code. It's all down there, have a look. They also do physics experiments and have all sorts of other great stuff for you to explore. Check out the Mel Science website and thanks to them for supporting this video.